right, welcome back to This Week in the Mohawk Valley. Jeff Manaski across from Sarah Foster. Welcome back. Thank you. Wait, can I can I retell my joke? We missed you last week, and I had to do the events calendar. And I know, we, and I'll retell mine. I think you guys are definitely going to be on your own again next week. <laughs> okay. That's all well, right. Well, I've though. got some practice. I'm, yeah. I'm getting used to it. Exactly. You, ha- you have to um, process information quickly on your events calendar because it's like time, date, where, what. I know. And well, to, that's why to I say always... that in a sentence form. Yeah, you, I have to go do an, go and do notes. Like I have to be like, this is the date, this is the day of the week, this is the time. Exactly. There's a little method to the madness there. So, <laughs> uh, tell us about what's going on today. So we are joined today by Art Felshaw, who is a director of the play Sorted Lives, and also on the board of directors for the Players of Utica. Welcome, Art. Thank you very much, Sarah, for having me. Yeah. So, um, why don't why don't we just dive right into it? What this is a play Sorted Lives, and I know there is a showing today at two. Um, yes. But you have a few upcoming dates, correct? Yes, we have a 2 o'clock matinee today, and then next week, uh, Friday and Saturday, will be a 7.30 performance, and then the Sunday will be another 2 o'clock matinee. Perfect. So that'll be April 7th and 8th at 7th 7.30. 7th and 8th, and then uh, 7.30, and then the 9th at 2 o'clock. Perfect. And this is taking place at uh, Players of Utica, which for anyone that doesn't know, it's on State Street. 1108 State Street, right next to Tiny's. Perfect. Um, and so what's, what is the play about? I mean, just for anyone that has no background information on it. Well, the, the, the play itself was, it was written by Del Shores. Um, it it uh, had a lot of um, garnered a, a like, sort of a cult status uh, once it was done in, in Los Angeles. It ran in Los Angeles for quite a few years. Yeah. Uh, and then it turned into a movie in about 2001 with Delta Burke and uh, Jeff Bridges. And that also sort of became a cult, a cult uh, movie. And then Netflix picked it up and made a couple of series out of it for a couple of years as well. Uh, hmm. the, the premise of, of the play... It revolves around the death of the matriarch of a, of a family in southern Texas. These characters are loosely based upon Del Shores' uh, f- own family and, and his friends. Okay. And uh, the death is accidental. It's explained in the play exactly what, how that happens. And then the rest of the show just revolves around the characters and, and how they deal with in the family and how they deal with the death and, and uh, friends and family. Very interesting. So, I mean, for anyone that doesn't know I, this also, what goes into this because you're actually director of the play I'm recommending this for Not the whole family. Not recommending it for children <laughs> but uh, Players does pride itself on trying to create a, a good uh, season for, for everyone something for everyone. Yeah. This is a little oh, absolutely. more for the adults. Perfect. You mentioned the uh, Netflix remakes I guess I'll say remakes and do you watch that for inspiration? Do you try to take your own angle on that? How does that work? And if it's something that's been replicated before? Well, as a director, I've been doing this for about 40 years or so. And uh, I try not to watch that type of stuff. And especially in this day and age when you have YouTube and all these kinds of things are all over YouTube. And I try to ask my cast not to watch that type of stuff. I want them to create their own characters, of course. And uh, I, I usually don't watch don't watch it. Although I, I, I have bits and pieces of it sometimes if you're looking for a set how, how, to, how to maybe build a set or how mm-hmm. to get get through a certain certain scene and just to see how other people have done it but uh, there's just no fun in doing it if you're going to replicate something right, right. you know so right, you got to put yeah. your own twist absolutely, on it absolutely yeah mm-hmm. i mean like how many people are involved in putting this together well, of course, there's the cast and, and, and the director, but then we have people that do our our makeup and our and our hair, and uh, we have a, some wonderful people, and we have a great team of people doing that because this is Southern Texas in the in the late or early 90s, mm-hmm. and we talk about hair, uh, it it it, want, it reaches the sky, you know, that's that's what women wore <laughs> those yeah, days, yeah. And they had hair reaching the sky, so we have a great a great fellow that's doing hair with us, that's and. Cool. Uh, and uh, the costume and, and the uh, makeup as well. Yeah, I feel like there are a lot of components that we see what, you know, is directly on the stage, but not necessarily mm-hmm. taking into account the director and people doing the costumes oh, absolutely. and all that stuff. And, and uh, our set builders and our set designers. Right. And, and so, many, so many times when you go to theater, you see these wonderful sets, but oftentimes there's absolutely more going on behind the, the, the set that you see than, than you see in the front. Right. So where, if people are looking to get tickets to this, where is the best place to go? Um, you can go to uh, playersoftheater.org, and that's our website, and you can order tickets online there. Uh, you can go to, uh, you can give us a call at um, 315-724-7624, 
Uh, you can reserve tickets without paying for them ahead of time and just show up, and as long as we'll, we'll uh, save them for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can come to the door on the night of the show, but we can't guarantee that there'll be a seat, especially when we have uh, some pretty popular shows. Uh, we can sell out pretty quickly. Yeah. So we really really recommend that you go to our website and order online ahead of time. Yeah, and I assume you guys have all, like, social media people can check on Facebook and we everything. We do. We have our own Facebook as well. Yep, our own Facebook page for Players of Utica, and um, and you can go there as well. So we wanted to remind people there's a showing today at 2 p.m., and then on April 7th and 8th, which is what, Friday and Saturday? Uh, that's a Friday and Saturday. That's at right? 7.30 mm-hmm. p.m. And then on Sunday, April 9th, it's another uh, matinee showing at 2 p.m. At 2 p.m., um, right. But I did want you to just mention briefly also, um, like, what players of Utica, I know you said you're on the board of directors, so, you know, what do you guys do? Well, w- Players has been in existence as a community theater for about 104 years. We're one of the oldest, Crazy. oldest, <laughs> oldest uh, community theaters in uh, not just New York, but in the country. Yeah. And uh, we have been doing that for all this time. The uh, We have a building at 1108 State Street, but that's not our first building, of course. We've been through a few buildings uh, mm-hmm. over, the, over the many years. And um, it's something that we want to reach out to the community. We've been doing it for all this time. And we're, we're so thankful that the community supports us. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Art. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm very happy to be here, and thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. We'll take a quick time out and come back with more of This Week in the Mohawk Valley.